In this lesson, we will use the ScanList utility to assess organizational security. We are in the ScanList portion of the video series. This lesson is part of a video series that prepares you for the hands-on portion of the CompTIA Security Plus exam and is designed to give you hands-on experience with the operation and incident response section of the exam. So what is ScanList? The ScanList command is a Linux utility that allows users to conduct network reconnaissance without directly scanning target systems, rather using external services to gather information. Linux users and administrators who need to gather network information for reconnaissance purposes use ScanList. The ScanList command can be used whenever there's a need to gather network information without conducting direct scans, which might be desirable in scenarios where stealth or privacy is a concern. The ScanList command is used within the Linux terminal environment. ScanList is used to avoid directly scanning target systems, which can help maintain privacy, reduce the risk of detection, and adhere to ethical considerations during network reconnaissance. ScanList functions by using external services that perform scans on behalf of the user, masking their identity and intentions, thereby providing network reconnaissance information without direct scans. The rest of the how is what this video is all about, so let's get into it. To get started, grab the companion guide from the link in the show notes below. Also, if you like this content, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any new videos. And we're back. So here we are in ScanList. And as we mentioned before, ScanList is a port scanning tool that allows you to take a look to see if a service and or port is available on a device. And to contrast that with Nmap, we want to just quickly revisit what we did with Nmap. So if you remember with Nmap, with direct scans, we had our client and you can directly scan scanme.org. The trouble is, is that the target would know that we have scanned them depending on what type of reconnaissance or tools that they have installed. With anonymous scans or like scanless, we use a proxy service. So we have something like uh, IP fingerprints or spider IP, and it sits in between our client and the target and the proxy service is going to make the scan on our behalf. So that's why we want to walk through the scan list process. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what that looks like. So we go into sudo apt update. So let's go ahead and go into a terminal. At this point, we should be very familiar with getting into a terminal. If not, you can uh, join the video library on Nmap and VirtualBox and all the other intro videos leading up to this point. So here I am, I have sudo app update. I'm just going to double click that just to make sure we have this here. And we're going to actually just type it into the command. Let's make it nice and easy for ourselves. So sudo apt update. This is to make sure to see what's available out there. It does require sudo, so I'm going to put in my password. After I put in my password, you see that we have a few updates. And now I'm going to use uh, Python. So if you look over here in the uh, companion guide, we have sudo apt install python3 package installer program so this is a python script is what's really going to happen here so on this side here let's first make our screen a little bit bigger so we can have some more real estate i ran the updates so i'm going to clear and now i'm just going to run the sudo app install python3 package installer program the scan list program is actually run on python so we want to make sure we have the latest and greatest version and then we're just going to just do a quick check and see what version of uh, pip we have. And we see we're on uh, 22.02. This is where it received the package from. So we look like we're all set. Let's go ahead and actually install scanless at this point. So sudo pip install, and this is going to install it as a Python and we'll just wait for that to work. It says, okay, this looks good. It's already satisfied. That's because I already had it installed. In your case, you will see the inst installation process go through. So this works out just fine for us. And now I just want to see if I have scanless installed and let's take a peek at that. So we go scanless tech H and sure enough, we have scanless and this is what it looks like here. So let's just do some housekeeping. We launched the terminal. Uh, sudo app update, install the package installer for Python. We check the version. I'll change the order of these here. We also install scanless and now we're at the help screen. So I'll just do housekeeping in terms of cleaning the document up. 
and might as well start off with the H screen, which is the help screen. So I'm going to clear and get that to the top. And what we see here is that we have a number of options. Uh, so if we run scanless H, as we see here, it's going to give us all of these options. So tac tac help or tac H is going to give us help. If we want to display the version, I can just up click here, hit V and it gives us the version 2.2.1. And then let's observe the syntax, if you will. So if we want to scan a device, we're going to scan the target, the minus T, the target, and we get to list the type of scanner that we're going to use. And we kind of saw a quick list of what the kind of scanners that we have available to us. We have IP fingerprints, ping EU, spider IP, standing tech, view DNS, and you get signal. We can use all of these. We can use some of them or we can use the default. And this allows us, the dash S allows us to take a look at that. If we drop down a little bit here, we see that we have the minus L is to list all the scanners. We'll take a peek at that in a moment. And the minus A will use all of them. So we'll go ahead and check all of these out. We just wanted to take a look at the syntax. And let's just do a quick, simple one here. So we'll come back and revisit all of these as we continue with this uh, video tutorial. So I'm going to scroll up and the first one we're going to do is take a look at scan and look at the dash L and get a list of all the scanners available to us. So as mentioned, we have IP fingerprints, ping EU, you see spider IP, standing tech. Now what we can do if we wanted to is we can actually go to these IP addresses on our own. For example, if I wanted to go to port scanner on my own, I can go ahead, it'll be redirect me. And if I wanted to port scan a device on my own, I can do this right here. So I can do 8.8.8. .8 Let's say it's uh, DNS. I'm going to say port 53. And I'm going to say, well, let's see what happens here. It says, great, the port is open at 8.8.8.53. So this service is running. The difference with us is what we're doing here is we're pulling this through a Python script so that way we can use this right at the command line. So for example, in Nmap, we use scan me as the target. In this case here, we're going to use scan me as well. And we're going to use the default you get signal. So we have scanless minus T. We're going to do scan me.org. And without specifying the scanner, the default scanner is going to be the you get signal. And the output is a little bit more colorful than Nmap. Again, Nmap is a great tool. It's very powerful. Uh, However, scanless gives us the opportunity to masquerade or potentially hide our identity by using a proxy service. So we have the port TCP port is closed. Uh, 21 FTP service is closed. However, we see that SSH is available on this service or scanme.org, and so is port 80 HTTP. So that's how we would use just a basic scan using the minus T scanme.org. I'm going to clear the screen so we can have a little bit more real estate. And in this case here, I'm going to specify a specific scanner. So I'm going to use scanless, same target, scanme.org. This time the scanner I'm going to select is the view DNS. We may have our purposes. And if you see here, it says view DNS is not available. So let's go ahead and try spider IP. See spider IP is going to work better for us. And it says, great. So I can specify which one of these scanless tools that I'm going to use. And we have a range of options here. And you see we have IP fingerprints and you see the rest here. And in this case here, I used the spider IP and I used the dash S to call the specific scanner. The other thing we can do is a random order. Let's just say I just want to switch it up a little bit. I don't always want to come from a particular IP or a particular uh, scanning service. We can use the minus R command and the minus R command is going to, okay, last one, it picks spider IP. Let's see what happens there. Okay, same results. If I up arrow and try and minus R again, it should pick a different one. And this time it picks standing tech. So we can just randomize and just go and pick a random scanner. Once again, I'll clear my screen to get to the top. And in this case here, we're going to do all of them. Let's just take a look at this particular target, scanme.org. And we want all of the scanning services to go ahead and take a look to make sure we have a comprehensive report. 
So there we have it. We have all of the scanners targeting the scanme.org. And if you notice that it went off the screen here, I can scroll. But as in many cases, if you're working for an organization or for yourself in a pen test environment or running a report, you may want to output this. So let's go ahead and take a look how we can output this. So I can just do a scan me and rather than use one of the output, I'm going to say all and I'm going to say pipe it to a text. And in this case here, I'm going to call it anonymous and it's going to the TXT and it's going to go right to the desktop because that's where I am here. And anonymous text is going to do an output of all of the scanners. It's going to scan scanme.org because that's our target. The text file is going to list all of them so that way we can look at the results in a text editor and or we can save this for report if we have to report to other team members. Okay, so the output is done. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to minimize the terminal. Somewhere over here, I should have a text file. So let's go to the home folder and we have this anonymous text here. I'm going to open it with a regular text editor. And of course, we're doing this through the graphical user interface. I could have cat the file and now I have a file. So what we were able to do was use all of the scanners and we redirected it to a file called anonymous.txt. And this is great for reporting purposes or if you need to record it. So we can learn a little bit more about Scanless. So let's close out our desktop to clean up a little bit. Uh, we'll do some housekeeping here because we have completed all of these tasks. So if you want to learn more about Scanless, you can visit the link here, which is the pypi.org project Scanless. If we take a peek, it gives you installation information. It also gives you the different supported online port scanners. It gives us the help screen that we saw and it runs through a couple of other examples and it breaks down a little bit more about how the program actually works, which is why we like to pick open source because it gives you more visibility. And then also you can always run the tech tech help. If you want to get more information on the help options, believe it or not, that's it. This was a quick and dirty video to show you the option of doing a direct scan that is anonymous. So essentially you're going to use a proxy service that's going to scan on your behalf and give you some of the outputs that you have seen on Nmap. So looking forward to the next video, just wanted to share this one real quickly with you and happy you could make it with us and we'll see you at the next one.